I don't normally do this, and I don't normally believe in doing this, but I'm going to do a bit of a follow-up on the chainsaw mill video. I'm taking the saw out to tighten up the chain. <laughs> I had a lot of comments about that, which I knew I would. I saw that it was slack when I went to cut, and I said to myself, you know what, John, you should save yourself some grief and tighten up that chain or you're going to hear it about it endlessly in the comments but i said to myself also you know what it'll be interesting to see just how many of those comments you get the comments that i wasn't really expecting i thought i would get one or two was about the chain itself whether it's a ripping chain or a regular chain. I didn't think to mention that in the video because I just assumed that most people would uh, assume that it was the regular chain that came with the saw because I didn't specifically mention it. And it is indeed the regular chain that came with the saw and I didn't see any reason to get a ripping chain. I don't see myself doing a whole lot of this so I figured it would be better to have the dual purpose. Uh, you know, this can obviously rip because you saw that. And, uh, you know, it's it's made for cross cutting effectively. So I didn't see any reason. But I may get a ripping chain just to try it out. I have two trees out in front here that are going to be taken down. Uh, eventually, the guy said he was going to, you know, be here about a week ago and he hasn't shown up yet so that potentially puts more wood in my hands to cut up and I can be a little bit more careful with how he cuts it up this time his original idea was to cut it up into 16 inch chunks for firewood and if I tell him that I want four foot pieces you know with the ends cut off relatively square then I'm sure he could do that too another comment I got was about uh, sharpening the chain to a uh, rip profile but there's very little on these teeth as it is so i'm not going to bother doing that uh, the cut i'm going to make today will just use the chain as it is it still feels pretty sharp i don't see any wear on them that's noticeable that is so i'll go again one problem that i did have and i saw this immediately after i started cutting was that the chips couldn't clear okay so the saw is sitting in here, like so, and the chips would go in there and get packed right inside there. So I'd have to stop periodically, pull the chainsaw up, and dump the chips out of that area in there where they get stuck. So what I want to do right now is take the bottom off and cut a recess there for the chips to get out. <laughs> looks pretty good that should work um, another comment I got was how powerful the saw was I forgot to mention that in the video or both of them and it's a 40 cc engine uh, which puts it around mid-range I guess a smaller saws have a lot less power or smaller engine this is um, not the biggest and it's definitely not the smallest. I didn't want to. This is another question, actually. Uh, did I think about electric? Actually, my first thought was electric. But then I went to look for electric saws and I couldn't find one that was what I thought would be durable enough for this uh, kind of thing. And plus, if I'm going to spend the money, I might as well spend a little bit more. And get something that's uh, a lot more versatile. I mean, you don't want to be tied to a cord. And, you know, this will allow me to go wherever I want to and use the saw. Not that I'm going to be going very far with it. But, you know, if I go up to the back up there and want to clear some brush, whatever, I've got the, uh, the saw to use up there for that. And, of course, there were no shortage of comments on, you know, suggesting how it could be improved. Uh, 
course, anything can be improved, but that really wasn't the point of the thing that I built here. It was meant to be quick, and it was really meant to be a test only. I'm just actually very pleased that it worked so as well as it did. And, of course, a couple of comments on the economy of doing it this way. I think I just put in maybe 100 milliliters of gas into the saw here. It didn't use very much at all to do that uh, cutting that I did. And so it's very economical in that regard. And then I cut up the rest of it on the band saw. So that's just using electricity. Okay, I've got a few candidates here. This one's a bit bigger <laughs> than I want to cut up now. I think I'll try this one right here. It's short, but it's the biggest uh, diameter piece that I have. And I think what I can do is like quarter it, cut in part of the way with the saw, turn it, cut in the rest of the way. So I'll take a you know, quarter out and an or I could just try to cut the whole thing one side first, then the other. I'm really curious to see how that goes though. This thing weighs a ton though. Ugh. Yeah, a few people ask if the wood is dry. It's not dry. It's far from it. The tree was cut down just 10 months ago and it would take a lot longer than that to dry out as, you know, wood this thick. You basically have uh, a drying rate of one inch per year, so it would take a long time. Uh, so, but, but that said, you really want to get it cut while it's green uh, because if you let it dry, it will continue to crack. It doesn't matter what you put on the end, it will just continue to crack. Uh, I'm not in the shape I used to be. Roll this around. A better strategy would have been to flip it over. And you know what? I think that's what I'm going to do instead of messing around with this anymore. I did it. Just got to move it further this way. So I'm cutting more towards the center. It isn't all fun and games with this damn thing, I'll tell you. So I gotta move the whole thing that way. But that's all right, because we're not as scared of work. We don't like it anymore, but we're not as scared of it. Why leave her when you can pound? Okay, I've got it all set up and ready to go. Just gonna get the saw going. See how it works. Okay, one thing I'm concerned about is I didn't check my block here. The block is repositioned actually. I moved it over a little bit further and the thing about the block is the last time I used it I had drove screws into it and then the screws broke off. So there are broken screws in the block and I just that just occurred to me that if the saw goes through the bottom of this and into the block I might cut into those screws. So. I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to stop cutting there and flip the, the log around and finish cutting the other side. Okay, you know what? I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that this is not going to work very well because, okay, the bottom of this log is not flat and when it was rotated the other way, I cut straight down through it according to the post. Now, if I rotate it 90 degrees, 
that will not line up with that post. So I got two choices here. I can either make a cut in this way using the post or I can freehand the rest of this cut right here, which is around, well, it looks like it's around seven inches up at the top here. And it goes down to probably two inches at the bottom by the, you know, just judging looking at it here. So I just use this slot as a guide for the for the bar, and I'll do it that way. And that'll be more exciting anyway, won't it? Okay, I've got a position relatively stable. I have once again screwed it on here just to make sure it doesn't tip over on me. I'm gonna drive a wedge in to spread this kerf open a little bit. Okay, I think that should crack open the rest of the way. Oh yeah, it's looking very loose. And why am I trying to pry that apart with my fingers when I've got a wrecking bar? I'll never know. That's the stupid shit my, my father used to do. <laughs> he used to piss me off when I'd see him doing it. Okay. All right. Looking very interesting inside there. These pieces look small, but damn, they're heavy. This one here alone has to be at least 100 pounds. Has to be. You know, I've lifted bags of cement that were lighter. Okay, I'm just going to let this one down, and I'm going to move this one in position to make another cut. But I'm not going to show that. I think that'll do it for this video. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway, I got the bigger half set up here for another cut. I've got it squared to the post and set the rice distance and tried to level it up as best I could. I want to try to cut straight down through it. And the other one is probably 10 inches thick at the butt, uh, the thickest part. I think I may be able to cut that on the bandsaw. I'll try it first rather than try it on here. Uh, the other option is to try to cut that end off, uh, the thickened part on this by setting it up and then just cutting out the bottom. But this one definitely can't go on the bandsaw, so I'm going to shave off this part over here and then I'm going to cut a piece off over here so that'll leave me a core in the middle that's around about six inches thick, so I'll get a bunch of boards. Well, certainly not this many because the log sweeps up, but I'll probably get six or seven good boards out of the middle here that are full width. So anyway, I'll leave it off here. I uh, just want to point out that the hole that I made at the bottom worked perfectly. You could probably see it piling up. I don't know about the camera angle. Maybe you couldn't, but it was uh, coming straight out of there. It wasn't uh, jamming up inside there, which is good. So a simple fix, just the way I like it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.